What's up everybody? This is Normie Nerddom. Hello again. So today I wanted to do a little bit more of a Normie-centric video, offering some wisdom and kind of sharing what, I, what I've learned in life. And uh, I, I always think of these things whenever I'm on my lunchtime walks. <laughs> it's, it's always kind of funny because, you know, I'm in my 30s. I feel like I've got a little bit more wisdom to offer than, you know, some disconnected 20-year-old TikToker who's only ever lived on the internet. You know, it's never really had a taste of hardship or what life is really like because you live on the internet. I say this as I post a video on the internet, but I'm not bitter at all, I promise. Uh, but today was, this, today was a little bit difficult for me because uh, my parents had to put my family dog down. And he was the first, he was the first dog that we ever had as a family. Constant companion, excellent, uh, yeah, excellent dog. The, just the goodest boy. Uh, I actually gave him his name. You know, just, it's rough. It's rough, but it, cause it was, it was time, you know, he's 87 in dog years, blind, deaf, confused, didn't know who anybody was, you know? And this was the time to make this decision before you know before things got worse for him and and i definitely identified with uh, a line in yellowstone spoken by rip wheeler said i'd rather kill a hundred men than have to kill another horse and you know what rip i understand i completely relate to that i would rather watch a hundred men die on screen than have to watch on a tv show or movie a horse, a dog, or a cat suffer. I would rather I'm, you know, that doesn't bo that doesn't bother me near as much as watching a defenseless animal be uh, be gravely hurt, you know, because people suck and I hate them. <laughs> I'm only partially kidding, but it's one of those it's one of those decisions that you know, just kind of it kind of shakes you. A little bit because now the last vestiges of my childhood are truly gone. He's our he's our family dog, the only dog we ever had growing up, and it just kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. I, I I I was more sad about it than I ever thought I would I would be. You know, I was uh, haven't seen haven't seen him in years, but still, just the memory, all the all the fun memories that we had of of him. You know, they're not going anywhere. And, you know, he's, he's going to be, he's in a better place now. Much better, much less suffering, that's for sure. You know, my mind, of course, cast to my own uh, two fur babies, my own, my, my two kitties. Uh, one of them, one of them you see in my videos all the time because she cannot stand the idea of there being a locked door and she not be on the other side of it. <laughs> and, uh... You know, I, I realize that one of these days I'm going to have to make that decision for my animals. And it's not easy to live with. It just sucks. It's an inevitability, though. Life was, must always end. And life does always end. There's a comfort and a curse in that. Just is. And I hope that whenever the time comes, where I have to make that decision for my animals, that I make the right one. That I make the good, I make the good, I make the, the right decision. I can't really promise that I, can't really promise that I will, but I will not, I do know that if my animals are ever going to be suffering, I'm not, I'm not gonna prolong it. You know, and it's, it just sucks because they are, they're, uh, animals are our constant companions. Especially dogs. Dogs are bred to be man's best friend. And uh, I remember watching a movie about uh, George Graham Vest and the trial of Old Drum, and he gave, gave this very emotional, stirring speech about a dog being man's best friend. And he's not, he's not wrong. <laughs> we don't deserve dogs. So, but that made me think about. An aspect of adulthood that I don't, I wasn't really prepared for, and really I don't think our culture prepares for it either. Because how many times 
have you been, uh, you on social media, been fed your own childhood, your own nostalgia back to you? We live in a society that is perpetually trying to recapture childhood. And I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing, as long as you don't stay there. But for me, I enjoy the, I enjoy the occasional video game, but I don't play it in a desperate bid to stay young. I'm in my 30s. I'm, I mean, I'm still young, young, comparatively. <laughs> so I still got a lot of living left to do, and that's perfectly fine. I'm going to take full advantage of it. Wife and I both refuse to let the old man in, as they say. Of course, I'm not old, but we refuse to let that stop us, to let age stop us. Age is just a number. We refuse to, you know, we refuse to die miserably and uh, Im uh, immobily, I guess. I don't, is that even a word? Die in our rocking chairs. We're gonna, we're gonna keep living. Cause that's what life's about. It's to live and experience things. And sometimes we are around people whose lives are uh, tragically short. You know what? It just helps you understand, helps you remember that you gotta keep living. You gotta keep living. But you know, in my adult life, thinking about the decisions that I will one, ha one day have to make for you know my animals or my family, my friends, anything at all. Life is all about decisions. It's all about branching pathways. You can choose to go one way and not choose to go another. The problem is, of course, how do you choose? How do you choose? I don't know. Just choose the next right thing. That's the only thing you can do whenever th when things seem when things seem very uncertain. When things seem like they're gonna they're gonna spiral out of control, just do the next right thing. Make the next right decision that you can. That's all you can do. I think that's all that's expected of you too. <laughs> I remember uh, Frozen 2 was the first time I heard that heard that saying, do the next right thing. And I doubt that w I doubt that any of those writers came up with that themselves. <laughs> it seemed like it was something that was co-opted from an older, wiser mind. Not someone from Disney, that's for sure. You know what? That's all you can do. But the point is you have to make a decision one way or another. You cannot sit in stagnation, in fear, petrified by what might happen that you don't want, by, by the decision, petrified by any of these decisions. You have to make a choice one way or another. There is no sitting by the wayside. You got to do something. And whether or not that decision becomes something good or something bad, I mean, it could be entirely up to you. It could not be. I'm speaking in generalities, but there are certainly times when you just gotta choose the lesser of two evils and just make the best decision you can with the information that you have. You cannot sit in that indecision. You cannot sit in fear of making the wrong decision. You have to make a choice. And you also, when you make that choice, good for you, good for you, but this is something I've been learning just in the past few years. <sighs> you cannot waste mental and emotional energy thinking about what you could have done differently. Man, I've just, I've wasted so much time living in the past. Imagining a world where I made a different choice, or my life turned out slightly differently. Because even if, even if you could have gone back and made a different call in your life. There's no guarantee that's actually going to be a benefit to you. You think it will, because you think, because you're maybe in your mind, you're thinking, oh, things can't get any worse. You don't know that. <laughs> you certainly don't know that. And that is certainly not true. Things absolutely could get worse. Things absolutely will get worse than you probably ever could imagine. But things could and will also get better than you could have ever imagined. But the point is you have to make a choice to put yourself on a path one way or another. You can make alterations. You can make slight deviations. You can choose to walk around a rock instead of over it or through it. 
<laughs> life is full of opportunity. Life is full of choices. You gotta, you gotta make, you gotta make a decision which path to take. That's the most important part. You can't live in fear anymore. You can't. You can't think about what comes, about what could have happened, what could have come, what could have gone differently. You instead have to think about what comes next. What other decisions are you gonna have to make on down the line? And you learn from your bad decisions. And you learn from your good decisions. But it's important that you have to make a choice. You can't just sit in fear of making the wrong one. So it's a, it's, a, it's a mindset. It's a it's an aspect of being human. Not a lot of people think about. We can't live in fear. Just can't. So anyway, I hope this helped. As general as it was. Hope this helped somehow, some way. Uh, we'll be back next week. Enjoy your weekend. Go outside, touch grass. Hug your family. Kiss your dogs. Kiss your spouses. You know, spend time stalking at memories. Because eventually, sooner or later, that's going to be all you, all you got. So enjoy life while it's here. Anyway, y'all. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.